um, I guess that the best t way to describe how we met is through the young Republicans. It mm -hmm. was in the roaring early 70s, and it was kind of a crazy time, crazy fun time in Macomb. And uh, I think he remembers better than I the first date. I don't remember. <laughs> he had to remind me. Well, I, uh, I, had, I had graduated, and she had started working at Western, and um, uh, we met like a lot of young people in that age bracket, you know. At a restaurant or a bar or someplace, you know, just a normal social inter social inter 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 interaction. And um, I invited her to Marcy Bodine's retirement party. Do you remember who Marcy a, Bodine? Who taught political science here at Western. And um, and that was our first date. And kind of from then, I guess she said, "Okay, I guess you're okay, Dave. I'll talk with you again." <laughs> well, this this is my hometown. I grew up on South Mona Street. And I've been here uh, all my life. Uh, and she had an apartment here in Macomb already. So during her early working days, right? Yeah. Over on Adam Street someplace. Right, right. right. Uh, and at some point in time, when it was obvious that she wasn't going to continue to live in Table Grove. She's already here. And uh, so through the normal dating and so on and so on, uh, which lasted forever, right? Yeah. That's so what your mom and dad thought. Yeah. I finally proposed and we got together. By the way, think, what do you think, Jack? You want to get married or not? It wasn't anything fancy. No. It was very simple. Uh, we, I put shockwaves into my parents at that time because my sister, who is five years younger than I am, had already told my parents that she and Steve were getting married in um, 1977. My dad had just torn up the yard knowing they were going to have a tent in the yard, and Dave and I popped in one night and said, hey, we're getting married this year. <laughs> so my dad had weddings um, two years in a row, yeah. ten months apart. Uh, they actually handcuffed me and, and, uh, after the wedding to a local stop sign on the highway. Well, there were several <laughs> cops there. Uh, some were friends, some were relatives, and so on. And uh, that was part of the harassment. I was probably do that because of some of the things I'd done to other people at their weddings. But they finally had to uncuff him because it was stormy weather and they were afraid lightning might hit the stop sign. So, yeah. and conduct a, so. I, I, um, I, graduated from VIT in 1968, then I went to Robert Morris College in Carthage, Illinois, when it was a, a private junior college. I, I graduated there with a degree, of, an associate degree in secretarial science. And so then I came to Western in 1970 with an associate's degree and started um, as a secretary in auxiliary services and facilities planning. And then I completed, during that time period, both my bachelor's and my master's degree while I was working full time. Well, you know, it was, uh... I, I thought I wanted to be a teacher. And uh, so we're sitting here, and this is back in the days when WI had a lot of effort in educating kids for, for, uh, for teaching positions. Uh, so it was, it was handy. I just walked across town. And I didn't have any money uh, to support myself, really. And uh, I did get a scholarship. Uh, and so I had a scholarship, and I worked at Kroger's. And that um, was kind of a, uh, inevitable for me to go to WIU as opposed to Eastern or Western. Or, I, I miss both that way. Eastern or Northern or someplace like that. Um, I've already, I think when I retired uh, in 2011, I called it a pretty incredible journey. And I think that's why one of the reasons I have so much love for Western is, is that it allowed me to complete two degrees while I was working full time. And it really afforded me some opportunities. I. When I started in 1970, I never dreamed I would have. And when I became a VP in um, 1997, it, it was it was really it was a it was an amazing event for me to think that I started as a secretary, and because of the support and the mentoring and the education that I received, I was able to become vice president of that very university. And um, I did it for 14 years, and it was it was incredible. And there were some tough times. I don't think we had the tough times that they've gone through after I retired, but that's that's one of my reasons I love Western so much is because of, of what it provided me, and, and I think it did him too, because it gives you a wonderful education. When I, as I mentioned informally earlier, I thought I wanted to be a teacher, and I had student taught like everybody else did, and I really walked away from that experience thinking, this is not the career path I want. And um, I had an opportunity, uh, Presented to me by Jim Garner, who's <clears throat> who's gone now, <clears throat> and uh, to join Northwestern, he had the Northwestern office, so to speak, here in Macomb, and he was in a manager role. And um, we kind of talked through that, 
he noticed that I had the military background and an uh, Eagle Scout and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> and I thought, well, maybe this is somebody I want to hire. Uh, and, he, and, he, and he did, and we got along, and, and, and 46 years later, I retired a couple years ago. Uh, Jim and I, in our later years, chose to open up an office in my name, and he had an office still in his name, so to speak. And then uh, uh, over time, he, was, he retired, and I continued to work, because the difference in our ages. But that's, uh, but that's basically what happened. I, well, as a kid in Macomb, I had the opportunity to, <clears throat> to join a Boy Scout troop. And um, Joe Powell and Dave Knight, <clears throat> excuse me, were now gone, were my two scout leaders. And uh, they uh, helped a lot of us achieve different ranks. I was lucky enough to achieve Eagle Scout. And uh, it was, they were very supportive. And, and you know, well, Macomb had a couple different groups doing scout training. The Catholic Church had one, and, uh, and, it was, and, and a group of individuals like Mr. Knight and Mr. Powell had another troop. <clears throat> so that was a time frame where scouting was pretty strong in Macomb. Uh, and, and the military thing came along because my dad was in World War II, and he said, you know, this is in the early stages of Vietnam. He said, if you're gonna go, kid, get, you gotta get a commission. And, uh, and he was very supportive. And uh, so I, I did join the guard on a premise that I want to take the test right now that would qualify me to attend OCS, Officers Candidate School. And I did take it and I passed it. And so I, I joined the guard about a year after I got out of high school. And then went on active duty off and on for a couple of years then. And, uh, and came home as a second lieutenant and uh, in the infantry. But I found out that the local guard unit out here, which was artillery, uh, had a spot if I wanted to join, but I had to go back on active duty and be achieved uh, a branch designation of an artillery officer. And uh, so I did do that. And, uh, <clears throat> and I'd been uh, in the guard unit out here for a probably short time frame. And had an opportunity because of some Unique, unique situations that came along. The assume command as a second lieutenant. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, and I was in that spot then for nine years, which uh, for, for the veterans listening is, they'll recognize that's very unusual. And, but it was a great opportunity for me to, have, to command a guard unit in my hometown. And <clears throat> the, uh, uh, and uh, it's just kind of worked out well for me. And, and 22 years later, I retired as a lieutenant colonel. Well, I think I had a great career as a guard, which if, if you think through this, you know, uh, uh, I was gone one or two weekends most, most year round, and she was at home. Uh, and so I had a lot, of, a lot of satisfaction there, and I had a different kind of satisfaction in running my own business. And when I finished up, uh, 46 years later, uh, I was ranked in one of the more senior, uh, or, uh, I, I'm not sure seen is the right term. Um, uh, I was recognized as having a, achieved a very high level of productivity, uh, career-wise within the company. With Northwestern. With Northwestern, <coughs> and so on. And, uh, I believe the number was, I was number 15 in the company uh, in career production is what we called it uh, when I retired that day. So I, uh, it was a different kind of atmosphere than we have today. Uh, I don't know if I do real well today with all the electronics, the technology, and technology in general. You know, and uh, uh, and the staff I have, uh, I had that day are still working with Northwestern, and, and through another agency also, and um, out of they're really dancing. Danzig. Yeah. yeah. Hmm? They're really with dancing, not yeah, Northwestern, yeah. but in your building. Yeah, they're still in my in my, yeah. my building. Over on Carroll Street. Well, it's not really his building anymore, I guess. That's no. probably, we'll always call it his building. It was there yeah, a long time, yeah. but it's not his anymore. But it's, um, and we were chit chatting about the changes that they're facing today. And you both have recognized that uh, I might have had some difficulties today because I wasn't one to, to keep up with technology. It was always seems to me uh, I could go get a 12 year old kid no more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, not uncommon. 
when he retired, I'd already been home for about nine, ten years by mm-hmm. myself, and I pretty much established my routine and don't like anybody interrupting my routine. And I said, and she had the audacity to say to me, <laughs> "You can't just come home. You have to find something to do." I did. Yeah. I think it's really important, especially for men, that they have got to have something to do when they retire. She let so, me buy a farm. <clears throat> so we bought a little little <laughs> acreage where it's got a cabin and some trails on it, and he can go out there quite a bit. So that keeps him busy and, and active. Um, I like to play canasta, so I go with some canasta groups. I'm, I'm still with the Prairie Conservatory. I'm on that board. I'm on the WIU Foundation board. And, and those types of things do keep me busy. I kind of enjoy more volunteering for single-type events as opposed to you know meetings all the time I, I think part of that's because I was in so many meetings during you know my time as a vice president that it, it can burn you out a little bit but um, we stay we stay busy with our we have two nephews and then five great nieces and nephews here in Macomb so that's that's fun my mom is still alive she's at the Lemoyne and I know we talk about dogs here and there and her little dogs considered the mayor of the Lemoyne which is very nice so um, we do things with families. We have a, a, a home at the Lake of the Ozarks. It's a vacation home. And one thing with him finally retiring, instead of us trying to take quick weekends, we go down for a week at a time, maybe each month, especially during the good season, we can, the, the better weather season, I should say. And we, we like to boat. I like to sit on the deck and watch the boats in the, in the water. So it's, it's been nice that we can go do some things more and not have to rush back because he's working. So. I think the last couple of years we probably haven't been quite as involved. He's he's finally gotten out of a few things too, just so that we can go do some things together and and do some things with our family too. Historically at Western, you know, I was um, on the alumni council for a number of years. I was I was president of that. I'm on the WIU Foundation board right now. I think I was president three or four years of that. I'm on the executive committee. Um, you know, we just until the COVID. I mean, COVID has kind of changed. Mm-hmm. Our activities here, we would come out to a lot of events and, you know, the the annual um, dinners and PS the performing arts and a lot of those things and that that's certainly tapered off. But we would be involved in a lot of those. It's it, they were fun mm-hmm. things to do. I mean, that's that's the beauty of Western for this community. It provides a lot of athletic events, you know, performing arts events, things that people in the community can that can be part of, and it keeps you very involved with the university, which. And plus, we're a small town. It's a town and gown. There's, you're always interacting with people at Western. Having been the vice president of administrative services, when you when you look at what the people do, you know they're 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 in my mind they were the unsung heroes. They were the backbone of the institution, and you never really heard anything about unless something bad happened. Like you know the you, you know the deferred maintenance on campus is still horrific, and so they were. You felt sometimes like they were holding buildings together with bailing wire. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but it took, takes a lot to handle this acreage and the number of the buildings and the age of these buildings. And the people that work in administrative services, they were just wonderful people. And I think the one thing I always wanted to do was to try to bring attention to the jobs that they did. And the two presidents I worked for, Doc, um, Don Spencer and Al Goldfarb, allowed me to do that. And I think we really made it the campus and the campus community more aware of what kind of work you know our building service workers did, and and what our police officers did. I mean, when when everybody else was enjoying things, they were trying to clean up water running into Western Hall when it was pouring down rain in a May graduation. You know, and the police were trying, our public safety officers were trying to get people in the building safely. And it's just, and you look around the room and you saw how clean it was. How you took a gymnasium and you turned it into a wonderful facility for graduation. And and it, I think that's you know that's. They made me appreciate all the work that you do behind the scenes to keep a university running, running smoothly every day. And if they did their jobs, that meant everybody else could do their jobs and educate these students. And they did a wonderful job of it in the, the 14 years I was able to work with them. Um, I think that what's unique is because Dave was community from an, an employment standpoint. I mean, you know, his, his activities in MADECO and, and Rotary and the Enterprise Zone, I mean, he was really community and I was at the university. And so we really brought two, those two things together for our appreciation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he, he was much more aware of what was going on in Macomb than, and I was more 
in, at Western. And I think that okay. probably probably helped us, you know, bridge that town and gown personally as Absolutely. well as professionally. In the mornings we, or in the evenings, we check our calendars and say, okay, what do you got going on tomorrow? And she might be out here till 8 o'clock at night or whatever. I might be free, so I'd be at supper on my own. Uh, but it may, uh, on the weekend, we may very well be going together all, all weekend with different events here in the community or, or on the campus. Uh, as, as Jackie mentioned, I was deeply involved in MACO for uh, 29 years. I just resigned from that, from that board recently. They, uh, they had Rotary, which had a lot of activities that I could participate mm -hmm. in, the Rotary Club itself or other social events. That's very supportive of the community. It's been, they spent uh, a lot of time, a lot of money helping them McComb. Uh, <clears throat> and I did the Enterprise Zone, Pro, which was closely allied to MACO. That's the entity that really helps with funding uh, for a number of years, too. Yeah. And uh, we, might, we might both be aware of some things that was interesting that was going to help the community from a different angle. And uh, most of the time, we couldn't talk about it. <laughs> the, uh, we always had a rule at the house we couldn't talk about shop and uh, but we both kind of were aware of things going on and uh, we were pretty careful about things like that I was the president of Mako when, when we brought Pella to town it was an exciting that was a really exciting time for Macomb I mean because that was there was a real tie between West you know Western played such an integral role as you were uh, as you recall mm -hmm. in in helping them provide some background information on jobs and everything. Oh, yeah. I kept getting calls from Al Goldfarb. This is Jackie. Call Human Resources and ask mm -hmm. them, blah blah blah. And I'm like, okay. And he's out trying to. He's try, Al was help, trying to help them with with uh, Pella. I had no idea who was coming to town. They all knew, but you know, it was like it was exciting and a kind of a team effort mm -hmm. when I watched how Western became such an integral part of that process and helping. More obvious, yeah. I no more uh, became president of Mako, and and uh, and Pierce said something's going on here. We got somebody who's really interested, <coughs> really interested in McComb, and and uh, and Mick was involved as the mayor, uh, Kim Pierce, myself, and two or three other people really knew what was going to happen, or all the privacy stuff, and and they just swore on the secrecy. Uh, the the day that they flew to McComb to announce. Uh, the uh, announcement was at the Mako Center. Uh, they told another community, we're not coming. But from the plane. <laughs> I, were, I think but that's... They were very, yeah. very professional about the whole event. But it was, we were, <clears throat> very, it was a very competitive environment. And uh, that was a, really a lifetime experience for me. I had no idea that um, uh, I'd ever be involved in in that kind of an event, <clears throat> but um, uh, and over the next couple of years, then we had several smaller events kind of come along too, to include leaving, you know, uh, I should say, leave, creating a, an atmosphere at the Mako building for for uh, some of the WIU needs. Kind of move, Mako moved off campus into a new facility that. Yeah, that was before. They were Pella, in. Though. They were in, Yeah, they were in Seal Hall, and they moved. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. I, but I it's was also involved when yeah. we actually moved Mako off the campus right. as the president. Yeah, I, I, for a couple of years it was this. Uh, I think I had a, I was self-employed because it was it took an awful lot of time to meet the things that was going on in, at Mako and 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 I I have to give Kim Pierce a lot of credit here. She uh, was very instrumental in all of this uh, as our director. And it 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 really was it. I, from my appearance, it was really how the town and gown really worked together so well because you had a president who was willing to step up and say, "I'm, I'm going to help these people as much as I could," and I think it was, I, I think that was a real help yeah. to have to have that kind of real community support with both town, the Malcolm, and the university. Absolutely, and, and, and I don't want to put too much emphasis on this, but having you and I. Uh, me on the campus and me off campus uh, probably helped a little bit in the, in, in the present kind of way to be as creative and helpful as possible. Uh, it wasn't like he was dealing with some spouse out here he didn't know. 
we've already made a connection. Yeah. The dog park was was kind of unusual. Um, it was when we were shutting down again. I think it was like the fall of 19. I'm, I'm, and you could just see where it was just taking the, the air out of everybody's sails. They thought that, you know, we were finally getting back to normal, that, that, that we could um, uh, be a normal, we could go into restaurants and we could didn't have any any curtailments and you could see when the governor put the mass mandate on and and again and asked for people to shut down their restaurants and businesses right before the holidays that you could just see the air just going out of people and we were at breakfast one morning I happened to be at the old dairy with some friends I said you know what this town needs something we just it's just so sad and then the dog park kind of fell into our lap I mean mm -hmm. Dave Dave was having lunch with Rachel and Basically, we we decided then to fund the dog, dog park as a Christmas present to Macomb, and then I think I've got the wrong. I think it was 2020. I think it was 20. It was 20. I, I was a year off. I, I, I the pandemic's lasted wrong. forever, but it was the fall of 20, and so Rachel and her team at the at the park district did an unbelievable job of putting this dog park together. Mm -hmm. I mean, they included us, but it was. Um, <clears throat> Anybody who looks at it with, you know, it's a big dog bone for all the animals, and then they've just got a little ball over at the side so that if someone has a shy dog or a dog that maybe doesn't interact well, they can still have a little area to put their dog in. Everything is dog-themed in it, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Then before I let him make some comments, I also want to do a shout-out to Linda and, um, and Dan O'Neill because they bought a dog, a Rocky dog, and... They then sold the business, they sold Sports Corner, and so they said, would it be okay if we put a Rocky dog at the dog park? And so it was certainly okay with us, and the, and the park district was so nice to put that mm -hmm. uh, a Rocky dog out there. And it's just such a nice compliment to it. It talks again about how the community, more people always pitch in, but the dog park is, is wonderful. I, that's right. I, uh, I, uh, I drive by it often because that's how I go to my farm. and. Uh, I will stop usually later in the day and kind of see how many people there. Many times I might count 20, 30 dogs. You know, a lot, of, and, their, and their owners, because you pretty much have to have an owner with a dog. For the generally speaking, how the rules are, are read, and it's uh, lots and lots of people. And I, I will bump into people that uh, don't even know me. They don't know I'm, why I'm there. And they'll just make some comment. No, I, I live in an apartment. Thank God somebody did this. And, uh, uh, or things like that. That uh, they were just, they're just so happy, so happy. Or maybe they live in a house, but for whatever goofy reason, they can't really walk their dog in the neighborhood or whatever. You know. Or the dog's an energetic dog like we have one of and needs, just needs to run. You yeah, know, and that's yeah. a great area for them just to, it's a yeah. big area and they can just run. And that's, that's, I don't think I knew how much need there was. Mm -mm. I think we uh, motivated this, this, this project was motivated from a little, maybe a different point of view, just kind of helping families in general, for the community. Uh, but I certainly didn't realize that we, on a, on a nice afternoon, that park is full. They really thought about the family because right outside the park, they've got some um, tr little, but what, what do you call them for children? Um, play play areas for children, mm -hmm. and and so the children. You, if you could have your kids out there playing, you, there's tables inside. You could sit at a table, and you can talk while while the dogs are running. I mean, they they really designed it with a family mm -hmm. um, process in it, and it's 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 really it's really wonderful for for families. And I'm really we're really pleased. Um, for me, it's really giving back to those who help me. I mean, it helped both of us. I, mean, I think I said earlier, if it weren't for Western, I wouldn't have had the career I've had. I don't think Dave would have had the career he would have had if we hadn't had this w wonderful university sitting here. And that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons I think the first major giving we did was a scholarship. And then I w and I, that first scholarship we did was for my high high school, VIT, and I wanted to make sure that that a school, a little school like VIT, that those students would have the opportunity to come to Western, and so there's a, a VIT student always here. 
at WIU. And then the Selkin Scholarship was for um, a student from Macomb High, which was where he mm -hmm. graduated. And we made a preference that if they had a mother or father that served in the military. So that, mm -hmm. I mean, that those were our first two major gifts because I think that it was really important to give back to the high schools or the school districts that helped us and then the university mm -hmm. that helped us and then and it, especially for the little schools like VIT, I think it's important that they see those kids going to college. I think it's easier for Macomb because Macomb is traditionally with, you know, gone to Western or other universities, but some of the smaller schools, that's not so much for. Mm -hmm. That I, yeah. I think something that um, we weren't expecting, we were at dinner with uh, Brad and Amy, mm -hmm. and um, they were just talking about wanting to have a, Colonel Rock Hansen statue on campus because of the importance that he was to this campus. I mean, it, we are we are the Leathernecks because of him. And anybody who reads the book about him, you 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 really feel so proud to be a Leatherneck at Western Illinois University because of because of Rock Hansen. And so Dave looked at me and says, "You know, Jackie, I think we can do that." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> so, well, you know, he was also a war hero. If you read the book, you realize that. Two different wars, and, and the Marine Corps actually called him back into World War II. He was a full colonel, and uh, he deserves uh, an awful lot of recognition, not only for what he did here, but also his military days. And uh, there's some pictures around town here uh, of him, uh, because he came back as the athletic director, if I'm, I think I recall that correctly. And it shows him with, with athletes and, and some of those earlier, cost, uh, earlier uniforms they'd wear. And uh, there's one picture, uh, it shows three or four guys and uh, probably football players. And one guy, it looks like it was a pilot showing how, how he, he would uh, fly his plane with a, at different angles on the wings and, uh, and so on. And, and uh, so uh, he did an awful lot for us, and, uh, but he deserves a lot of recognition. And it's, it's, it's the culture of this campus. And I think that for me, that that's what's so important. That 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 as people move on, we can't forget who we are and why we're here. And Rock Hansen is one of the reasons we are who we are today. And I, that statue is, um, it's still a little surreal for me. If you want to know the truth, I don't know about Dave, but I walk by it, and it's it's just surreal. And um, I'm really glad that it's getting the respect that it's getting. You know, statues are, there's some discussions about statues anymore. And I think he, he deserves, I wish he could look down today and see a statue there. I think that would be really neat that he realized how much this campus, how many years later, still thinks so much about what he did for us. And I, I think we, we as a community and as a campus owe a lot to him to continue that mm -hmm. the, the campus and the culture of the campus that he really established for us. I would really like to see it go back to when we were this bustling campus with students all over, faculty, staff, and students, you know, roaming through campus that, that you're not worried about COVID, you're not worried about anything else, that they can have the normalcy of what a college life should be. I, 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 I would like that any I just, I, I wish that for everybody right now, all the, all the children in school. I, I, I want them to know what, what college life really is and what fun it can be for, for, I mean, it's a learning experience, but it's also, it's where you grow up, where you mature, where you take those next steps. Um, I think education's gonna probably have to change. I mean, I think, I looked at the um, e-sports arena, which I, I compliment Joe Roseleaf and John Birnbaum and that whole team for putting that together. The foundation, which I serve on, was part of that. I think that's one of the futures of higher education. I have, we have some contemporaries that we see and they don't understand what is that. And I'm like, you know, that's, this is a big deal. And that Western had the foresight to go ahead and get this done earlier than later. I think that's gonna be a real long-term benefit to the campus. Sure. I, I also think that um, they have to keep evolving to meet the needs of the students, whatever that, whatever education they need so they can go out into the world and get that good paying job or that and make sure that they're educating them so that they are educating them for jobs that are going to be available. 
I, I think that's really important too. I think Western can do it. I mean, we've gone through tough times before, but I, I'd like to see a little bit of return. I don't know if I want to see the return to how it was in the 70s. I'm not sure people today could tell. I mean, it was, Maybe we not. had a good time, but you know, we were uh, we were products of that different, generation. Different amateur, no. But but I would like to see it so that it's a, it's a bustling campus where people are just comfortable and having a good time because education is absolutely primary. It's got to be that, but you have to have that socialization too. And you've got to have that interaction with your fellow students. You've got to have that interaction with your faculty. You've got to have the interaction with the community. And I, it, it, that's where I would like to see it go to. I, I, I think they've got to reinvent themselves a little bit, but they still also need that, the people contact. I think that's really important. I would add that I think it's very important that uh, going forward that you know the old the old phrase town and gown. Maybe we need uh, some more emphasis in that area and make sure that people understand that outside the ag economy and the in the area, this is our biggest employer. Ag beats everybody, but uh, and uh, we need to recognize it so that WIU is a, a very important portion of our economy and, and we also need to recognize we have a couple of factories out here that are very important too but you know it, it sometimes it's difficult to take factory life WIU and the ag economy and, and all have them walk to, in, in the same direction and uh, I think that's very important that one I think that's something I would look forward to, to our leadership in those different primary areas I just mentioned <coughs> need to understand, let's cooperate and get the job done. I, I also think, you know, I've, I, we both had the opportunity to meet the new president, President Huang. He's just the kindest, nicest man. And I really like the fact that, I, I think he's really working at bringing Western back, and I'm really glad to see that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we ever, we, we never really considered leaving Macomb, but, um, you know, if you think about being able to finish two degrees here while I was working. If you think about, I had a great career path, he had a great career path. And Macomb really, it's a very wonderful community. Macomb and McDonough County, the surrounding areas. Um, our family's here, mm -hmm. my family's, all my family's here, they all live in Macomb. They're, most of them are graduates of WIU. So it, it, it's just a natural fit for us, I think. That's a good way to end it, I think, for you. And I'll, I'll enter it. It was a natural fit for me, too. I, it just, Macomb gives me what I'm looking for. A lot of safety, a lot of security. Mm -hmm. So Macomb gives us the safety, gives us a good school system. And sure, there's controversy in any system like that from time to time. Uh, and, uh, but that's okay. I have a district money fine does a good job. And uh, if you're looking for, for those kinds of, those kinds of, that kind of atmosphere I descri described, uh, where else am I going to go? You know, I, I think that one thing that people fail to recognize that because of Western, Macomb has a lot to offer. And with the, the changes there are today, to a degree, from people working from home, and I think Macomb in this area would be very attractive to somebody who wants, what the, Dave said, a safe environment. We have good internet. We, re, we have a train that goes to and from Chicago twice That's a day. That's unusual. Twice Most a day, don't have that. and we really have a pretty decent road system, and that Macomb sh could, can be an area that attracts new people who who can work from home or they don't have to be in the office several days a week. I I, I think that there's some real opportunities here that that um, sometimes you have to step outside and look at yourself because it's so easy to be critical, but you need to be <clears throat> positive and realize how much we have to offer. And I think we have a lot to offer. And then probably one last statement. I don't know if you remember the TV show Cheers, you know, it's when you walk in where everybody knows your name. And that's kind of nice about here because it doesn't matter where you go or what you do. You usually find somebody you know and you can sit and have breakfast with them. You can have, you sit together and have, be in a group and, and talk and have dinner together. And it's really nice to have that kind of interaction. And, and Macomb and this West Central area, yep. they offer that.